you know, talking to, uh, talk very briefly about uh, Coach Kendall. Uh, you know, his passing obviously uh, resonates with anybody that's ever uh, lived in Tucson, followed U of A sports, certainly the baseball program and just athletics in general. And uh, in my nine years here in, in Tucson, uh, my path crossed with his uh, several times, mostly because he would he would at least uh, stop in at some point and wish us good luck, uh, check on me as a as a new guy in town for a while there, and uh, it became apparent to me that when you talk to somebody like him, that you were really talking to a special person, not not a, a former great coach, former great player, but somebody that uh, just was really a great guy. And uh, you know his passing affects all of us, and uh, you know our thoughts. My family's thoughts and prayers to his family and uh, wishing them well, always tough when something like that happens over the holiday season. So um, having said that, obviously uh, we have a big game on our hands uh, here on Saturday. And uh, you know, there's not uh, really any easy answers uh, in, in terms of playing against Arizona State. They have one of those offenses uh, that you don't oftentimes see. They, uh, of, of great firepower, and uh, to me, the the most revealing statistic that they have going for them is just their ability to score from the free throw line. Uh, they're the furthest thing from just this small team that shoots threes. Uh, they uh, they really are efficient, and they get to the foul line at a very high level. One of the best in the country, and in my mind, one of the most understated players on their team, and a big concern. Uh, for, for anybody that plays them is Romello White, who's a, a big guy that has fantastic hands, rebounds, and gives them an inside presence that, that makes what they do even that much more difficult to defend. So um, we have a, one, one big test on our hands on Saturday, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be up to the challenge and task. Um, you know, they have a lot of returning experience um, in, in today's uh, college basketball game. Uh, when your best players are older, seniors, that, that's always a, a plus for your team and program. And in their case, you know, they really take the court with, you know, in essence, uh, three, four-year starters. But, uh, you know, to their coaching staff's credit, um, each of those three guys, you know, Evans, Justice, Holder, they've, they've improved. They're not the same players that they were a year or two ago. They, they've added to what they've done as, as players. And uh, they're playing their, their very best at the end of their career, which is what we all hope to, to have as part of our program when you have those upperclassmen. We've had a, a fair share of those guys that really hit their stride in their final year. But, uh, but you know, number three in the nation, and you know, I think somebody that, that can win the national championship, certainly a number one seed in the tournament, uh, I think a heavy favorite to win our conference. I don't know if anybody maybe saw that coming, but uh, that's that's what they've earned. So I think that they have a chance to really, they've already had a special season and I think they'll only add to it. They do, they do a couple of things that, uh, that you haven't been good at that are improving at, uh, defending the three and penetration. Do you, do you like where you're at now defensively to prevent that success from that? No, uh, it's a big problem. Um, you know, I, I, I don't care who you have defensively. Um, no one's really been able to uh, keep them off the free throw line to, to stop them in transition. And, uh, you know, we're, we're the next team in line to give them uh, a, a test. So um, that's something that, you know, our starting guards have to do a really good job. Our team, you know, our big guys. But our bench, guys who come in off the bench, uh, they have to be able to defend, and they have to be able to be responsible. And in a game like this, uh, you you can't be that player who checks in the game and you know gives up four baskets. And you just coach, why did you take me out? I mean, uh, that's the type of team that that Arizona State has. So every possession, defensively, you don't have to be perfect, but you know, you really have to understand that this is a very difficult challenge to keep them from having uh, that big night offensively like they've had throughout the season. Do you think this is kind of a template for the way other teams will play in the future? I, I don't know. You have to have the personnel to play the way they play. Have you ever seen a team like them uh, in the past? I couldn't remember somebody, Vegas in the early 90s, just where they just 
frenetic. It's all over you. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Well, last year, UCLA was one of the best offensive teams that I've seen. Um, their statistics prove that out. They were uh, a nightmare to defend. Um, they had uh, some similarities. Their pace was, was fast, actually even faster than Arizona State. Uh, they had that balance of, of having a good big guy or big guys that could score with, with terrific guard play. But you know, UCLA was an unbelievable uh, high percentage scoring team. You know, they, when they shot a two, it went in. When they, when they shot a three, it went in. They didn't really get to the free throw line a lot. And, um, but with ASU, their ability to score from the foul line, uh, get there and make the free throws that they shoot, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on your team. That's the difference. Tucson's played well recently, but against ASU, what's his what's his challenge on the defensive end when they don't have a, a big guy that really looks like him? Well, we've played a number of teams, you know, in our thirteen non-conference games that that have you know a five man that can shoot, uh, maybe four perimeter players um, around a five man that is as a true center. And, and we've uh, worked our way through that. You know, Dusan has earned the right to, to play the minutes that he plays because he's one of our team's best players. And he's improved as much as anybody on the defensive end. You know, he's, I don't know if anybody will, will vote for him for the all-conference defensive team. But, you know, so much of this is about can we uh, see him become the best that he can become. And um, he's improved towards the latter half of our uh, non-conference schedule. And uh, sometimes that light goes on at different points in your career. But, you know, whoever takes the court on Saturday has to be uh, a, somebody who plays really hard and smart defensively and uh, does the best that they can. So, you know, Dusan will have his hands full, but I can't really name anybody on our team that won't have their hands full on Saturday. You know, they're, uh, they're obviously a, a tremendous offensive team. That said, you guys match up obviously very well with them given the talent you have and the depth you have. Um, so you must like that, where you match up well on the perimeter. You have, you know, Hawkins is back, and Trier's been a, defender, a better defender now. You know, I, I think we're going to have to figure that out on Saturday. We'll see at the end of the game how well we matched up. Um, yeah. And the same thing with depth. Uh, I, I don't know if we have a deep team. You know, we're, we're trying to figure out who we're playing. Um, that's not because uh, I'm not paying attention to who I want to play. That's because it's very difficult to determine who should. And uh, that's not a good thing. So we have a lot of guys working hard. Um, we've had a, a couple great practices since we've returned. And, you know, we have that competitive spirit in practice because, you know, there's really no surefire thing once you get past a few players because um, we're hoping that it separates itself out, but it really hasn't yet. And that's why I said what I said. We need uh, our bench to come in and do a real good job in this game. I think if we would have the opportunity to uh, to be in the game, to, to compete and have a chance to win this game, I, I think we'll have a lot of good play from guys coming in off the bench. Well, Ron said earlier that this yesterday's practice was probably the best one of the year, just intensity and getting after it. Mm -hmm. you, you, you kind of just confirmed that, yeah. And is it because of the magnitude of the game or the moment, or just because they need to get that to that place? No, you know, I think uh, we had a good Christmas break, uh, you know, because we, we traveled to Spain in the, in the summer. Um, if you just kind of look at the timeline of uh, what we've all done, we really haven't had that break. So the break came at a, at a great time, and, uh, and we took advantage of it, you know, allowing our players to, to escape Tucson and, you know, the university, the grind of a basketball practice, and getting away from me. Um, I think it's healthy for those guys to be away and with family and friends. So that and, you know, I think everybody came back refreshed. Raleigh practicing is a big deal. We, we really haven't had more than maybe seven, eight practices with him. And uh, when you're getting ready for the next game right away, even though he practices, there's only so much you can do. So I believe, believe me, just having him back every day in practice has, has made that part of our uh, program better. In what ways is he uh, part of the emotional hub of the team? You know, he loves the game. Um, you know, you ask Raleigh about uh, the New York Giants or uh, the New York Jets, he's not going to have a lot of answers for you. Um, he's about basketball. He loves the game. It's just one of his great characteristics and strengths. And, 
and he wants to be a terrific player himself, but he competes. He knows uh, because of his style of play, he's very team-centered, and uh, you know, I think that that's, that's contagious. Is it, is it, how much beneficial is it, or isn't it, having a long week to prepare for them instead of a short prep? Um, you know, the fact that we, we had a, an, an opportunity to uh, have the break that we did, it's, it's, I think, healthy to have a number of practices before we play them. Um, I, I like uh, how it's set up for us. I'm sure that they like how it's set up for them as well. You know, we both have similar breaks. I think they played uh, the next afternoon, and I'm not sure how they went about their, their practices or whatever, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a good time. Non-conference is done. You, you bring closure to those 13 games. And now you have these uh, 18 Pac-12 games ahead of us, and uh, we, you know, we have to be ready to go. It's a strange dynamic. I mean, you, you, typically you would be number three, and they would be whatever ranked or unranked. Um, it's kind of is it strange to you one, and um, and I can't remember a time when Arizona teams did not show up for a big game. Mm -hmm. It's always emotionally ready, especially against the higher ranked team. Mm -hmm. No, they, um, you know, they deserve the credit. You know, it's uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I think coaches have a hard time giving that other coach and program credit. It's, it's, it reflects poorly on you. You know, the better that they do, the more people start asking, well, why aren't you ranked higher? You know, you, you have more, you do this. They, they have earned the right to, to be the number three team in the country. Um, Bobby Hurley and, and his staff, you know, they've recruited well. They've coached well. They've, they've been aggressive in their non-conference scheduling. It uh, looks to me like they have the best crowds that maybe I've seen um, since I've come here at Wells Fargo Arena. And, uh, you know, that's great for them. And, you know, we're, we're playing a, a game here on Saturday with great meaning because of, of how good they are. So circling back to something you said at the start, you consider ASU the heavy favorite in the league? Yeah, I, I mean, I think they have uh, all the parts. They really do. They experience, guard play in college basketball is so important, and they have, you know, depth at that position. Not just quality, but different players on different nights as guards that can really step up. And uh, you know, they play a, a style and a pace that's very difficult to play against. So, um, you know, I, I think they uh, they have a lot of answers for sure. That takes the burden off of you of being there. Heavy favorite. We're always the heavy favorite, you know. I mean, in some ways, right? We lost three games, and and uh, it's a big story. We're ten and three, so I think for us, uh, we know who we are. Uh, we're supposed to win every game, and uh, that's what all of us signed up for. But in terms of giving Arizona State credit, uh, they deserve all the credit in the world by what they've done. And you know, when this game ends, unlike college football. You know, we're not going to take the, the Christmas break and, and wait until next fall. There's a game about five days later that we both have to play, and there's 17 remaining conference games. You know, I remember a year ago uh, we played UCLA at home, senior night we lost, and I don't know if anything positive was said about us. And uh, yet we lost to, I think, one of the, at that time, best teams in college basketball. And uh, we responded by going and winning the Pac-12 tournament and, and winning a couple games in the NCAA tournament. You know, that was, that was like a healthy dose for us of, of, of learning. It was a growth moment. And maybe on the outside it didn't feel that way, but within our own team it did. And I think that's the biggest part about Saturday's game. Whoever loses this game can go on and, and be great. And whoever wins this game, uh, there's no surefire reason to believe that you know, you're going to have the opportunity to, to win the conference. Um, on ASU's uh, perspective, if, if you're able to come and, and get a road win, certainly that will be a big moment. But uh, they're playing uh, great. They're a terrific team. If you go to Kansas and win, uh, you're, you're real good. So uh, with that, uh, hopefully that we can, we can play really well on Saturday. Um, you know, not really, um, probably not really. I mean, there's in, in Western Pennsylvania, there's always those, uh, 
high schools, Aliquippa would stand out or Beaver Falls, you know, because of their history. That those those would would kind of be the gold standard at the time, but uh, but no no like nothing like that. Nothing like this ASU thing. Yeah, you know AS. I mean, every program has their rivalry. Um, you know, when I was at Xavier, um, the Cincinnati Xavier Crosstown shootout is. I mean, you can't compare that to anything. Uh, Arizona State, Arizona. They. There, there's nothing like that game right there. That's a, a bloodbath. And anyone who's coached in that game or played in that game understands that that's just different. Uh, if you're soft, you, you just you want to transfer right after the game. Uh, you know, the difference here is that we're, we're in the same conference. We play twice a year. We could play three times a year. And there's great meaning. But I feel like when we play UCLA, there's great meaning. And, and really, every game that we play, uh, you know, we were trying to win. So with that, we respect the rivalry, and, and, uh, but I, I don't think it's consuming. What has Mitchell added to ASU in the last couple of games? Well, I'm familiar with him. You know, he went to Ohio State and played for uh, a Thad, who I know real well. You know, I think he's an excellent passer for a big guy, really skilled and smart, an explosive athlete, gives them rebounding, gives them added depth up front. Um, you know, they have another guy who hasn't played who I think is terrific. Um, and, you know, if he plays in our game, again, I think if you add those two bigs to, to, uh, to what they've done without them, <clears throat> you know, I'm, like I said, I, I think they have a chance to, to uh, compete for the top prize in the country.